I'm Beth Bowles with the University of Florida Scambia County Extension and one of the favorite things that we get calls about and questions is growing your own edible garden. And in Florida, in both winter and summer, there's a huge variety of things that you can grow, but the downside is that you have to often wait to get something to eat. There are a few things like a radish that will mature within a few weeks, but a lot of times like our broccoli here, we're actually waiting more than 70 or 80 days at times to get something that we can enjoy in our salad or for a dish that we're preparing. So for those of you who really don't want to wait this long and want something quicker, there's a new type of gardening that people do, are doing called growing microgreens. And this is something that if you don't have a lot of time to invest or don't even have a lot of garden space, you can actually do in your own home or a sunny window or some area that gets bright light and have something to add to salads, uh, your sandwiches that's really tasty and also gets you some of those good greens everyone's talking about. So let's go over and I'm gonna show you how to get started growing microgreens. So we're set up here to show you exactly how to grow something that's gonna be really tasty. It can add spice or flavor to your foods and doesn't take a lot of time. And that's microgreens. What these are, are your common herbs and vegetables, but you're gonna grow them only to the first couple of leaves and you're only gonna harvest and eat the leaf and the shoot. And so it doesn't take a lot of time to do this or a lot of materials. So what, how we wanna get started is we need a container. You can purchase one from the store or you can use something you have around the house, clean that well so that it's disinfected, and then you're gonna find a type of potting soil that's good for seedlings. You want something that doesn't have a lot of bark in it and it's very fine because you're growing usually seeds in this and you don't want something in that soil to interfere with the seedling germination. Now, the good thing about it, we don't need much soil at all. We only need about a quarter to a half an inch of soil. So you're not having to use a whole lot and invest a whole lot in this type project. So once we get our soil in the container, I kind of press that down so it has a firm base. You want to make sure that soil has a little bit of moisture. So I have my nice hand pump here that I can water that soil just a little bit to make sure it's going to stay put. And then the next stage is choosing the plant that you want to grow. Today I have radish because radish gives you a nice spicy flavor to your foods or sandwiches uh, when you add it to your salad at the end as a decorative or a nice flavor. Uh, there's things like kales, you can grow herbs like dill or basils. You have a whole host of different edibles that you can grow that you're just harvesting before they get mature. Now, I bought these seeds from a bulk uh, seed distributor, so sometimes they could come in with a little disease on the seed. So what we did ahead of time, we actually put these seeds in a little bit of hydrogen peroxide just to disinfect the seed. And because we're eating such tiny seedlings, we don't want to have any diseases that could get transferred. So once those are dry, they're ready to put on top of the soil. We don't really have to push seeds down in here. But what you want to do, you're only going to put about six seeds per square inch. It's if a large seed like a sunflower, or if it's a small seed like this radish, we're going to put about 10 to 12 seeds per square inch. Now, you're not gonna go out and individually plant these. We're gonna kinda just scatter these over. You wanna seed a little bit heavy, because remember, we want a dense uh, growth of this, but not where it's so crowded that it'll stay too humid and you have problems with disease. So when you get done, they'll be a little bit close together, but you'll have some space where they can come up and get some of that air movement in it. So once that's done, the seeds are sitting just on top of this soil. My next step that we found that works really well is we use a product called vermiculite. And vermiculite is just a mineral that's been heated that holds a lot of moisture. 
So this vermiculite here will just be sprinkled on top of those seeds very gently. And what that's going to do is hold moisture where the seeds really want to germinate. And be careful not to breathe this in. Just be cautious it is when it's dry, a little bit dusty. And that will help the seeds also prevent diseases from happening. So not too hard. This isn't taking a very long time uh, or investment for you for planting. I get my water and you're going to have to water this every day until they come up. So that vermiculite will help hold in that moisture. And the good thing is with radish, within a day or so, you're going to see those seedlings start to pop up. And within a week, you have something to eat. So that's the good thing with this. Now one thing about it, these seedlings, once they germinate, they really need bright light. If you don't have a grow house or a really bright window to put these in, the stores do offer a nice light. And I've got this really fancy system here with bricks. And so once those seedlings emerge, I put my light over it and that light will help those seedlings make food until we're ready to harvest them in about a week. If you don't have the light really close to the seedlings, they'll get a little bit too leggy and you'll lose some of that good flavor and nice display that you have with those seedlings. They're still edible, will still be good, but you want them really, that light really close for healthy seedlings. So here we are at the end. This is the radish I grew off a little more than a week and a half ago. It's ready to harvest. Now the thing to remember about microgreens, you're not pulling these out of the soil. You're actually going to find a clean bowl. Make sure everything you do when you harvest is clean. And you're going to very carefully cut these off into your clean bowl. And this is a wonderful way for people who don't like a lot of greens, maybe some children in your family uh, that may not eat as much as you think they should, to sneak some greens into something that they eat in a sandwich that you make for them uh, with some cheese and some kind of turkey or ham, and they'll never know. It just gives a nice kick to that. If you're not a fan of the spicy things, there's wonderful things like kales that do very well, very quickly, that also offer you flavor. So you have a lot of options for microgreens. And the really good thing about this is if you find you don't like it, you've only spent about a week and a half trying to grow something. So you can move on to your next gardening endeavor and say, microgreens, I tried you, it's not for me. And you haven't wasted too much of your time. But a lot of people are growing this. You'll find them now in some fancy restaurants that you're using, that they're using microgreens. So you can join in all the excitement and have your own. If you need more information about growing microgreens or any other edible that you have, give us a call here at Escambia County Extension, University of Florida.